Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Riverbed Disrupt. Brought to you by Riverbed. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We're here with Jay Haynes, who is the global IT operations leader at Royal Dutch Shell. Great to see you. Hi, right, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. We love to get the Glad practitioner's perspectives. Glad you guys to be here. Are, you know, on the front lines, solving the world's problems, you know, making it all tick. Yep. So, uh, first of all, what do you think of Disrupt? How's it going for you? Oh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been great so far. Uh, I've actually participated in uh, several events um, like this, but uh, the Disrupt, um, I've uh, learned a lot today and um, got some insight, both at the high level strategy perspective, but also in the breakout sessions, I saw some bit level stuff that I'm ready to go back to the shop and I would say play myself, but actually it'll be get my guys to play. Okay. But I, they gave me the ideas that I saw something, I'm like, hey, I like that. So it's been very good. Oh, so I want to actually come back to some of those, but so, but tell us about your role at Shell before we get So, uh, Royal Dutch Shell, a uh, large integrated oil and gas company. Sure. I suspect most people have heard it. Uh, of it, um, we, you know, t and, and right now actually the integrated part is good because with the price of oil being down, um, we're talking about what we say lower for longer and how do we to survive in that environment in the um, exploration and production environment. Um, and, uh, but downstream and chemicals are doing very, are doing well because of the, obviously the feedstock price is uh, um, optimal. But in the, you know, balance game, you know, it's a tough environment to operate in. And so uh, I manage the, uh, our, our kind of our global IT operations for uh, our infrastructure and applications area. And we um, are responsible. I tell people I'm in charge of bad. Um, if it's bad, people call me because something's broke. We need to get something back up and running. Um, and then I'm also responsible for the operational integration or SIAM function if you're aware of that, um, on the integration side of making sure that we integrate all of the suppliers and app teams and um, across the entire shell uh, in the globe. So I want to ask you, so Jay, energy companies are, you know, they're used to solving big, hairy, gnarly problems, they're engineering oriented, but it sounds like they're, they're, they're no less um, difficult on IT. <laughs> than other companies. Is that the case, or are they more, are they more receptive to the challenges that you face as an IT Well, person? it depends on, on the business, and so the <laughs> Shell has such a scale that actually it's a bunch of businesses put together. Um, upstream wants it fast, downstream wants it cheap, trading wants it up, and you know, trading, we have a quote, uh, minutes mean millions. Um, and so depending on the segment that you're in, or the time of day, or the project or activity that's going on, um, the dynamics of it change. And so, you know, this theme of disrupt from a di digitalization perspective is to a degree, it's, it's, it's good news, bad news, and being kind of forced upon us um, with the changes in technology. You know, it used to be you'd have a um, shift worker go in, to a terminal and enter a shift log. And so your prol proliferation of IT was often very concentrated. Now with digitalization, and laptops and tablets and mobile devices um, and pushing the apps further and further into the hands of users is really changing uh, the dynamics of the IT landscape and, and what we have to provide yeah. and, and support. Yeah, Jay, I, I, when we've looked at kind of the oil and gas industry, you know, data is so important. It's one of the use cases that comes up in analytics and a lot of what we look at. Uh, you know, so how, how are things like digital transformation and, and you know, big data analytics transforming uh, kind of the role of IT inside Shell? Um, again, it, it goes back to, um, you know, the business. With um, the cloud, um, the cost of storage is all of a sudden potentially cheaper. But the tra challenge is, is getting it in and out. And so the strategies of what do you do with that data, depending on where the data is. And then um, the telemetry of people pulling up to a gas station and using a, um, um, either a credit card or a loyalties card um, and having that data to be able to quickly do those transactions, but at the same time keeping it um, secure 
um, big issues, big problems, um, probably maybe not in the same realm as a financial institution of a bank, but in the retail space, um, there are a lot of concerns with security um, and making sure that we protect the customer's data um, and then the applications that go along with that um, obviously need to be up, running, secure. Well, it's an interesting question, right, because you know the old bromide, the data is the new oil. You guys are all about the oil. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of people don't like that comparison, but, uh, but nonetheless, paint us a picture, if you would, Jay, of sort of the applications that you're supporting. Um, huge company, obviously, massive scale, but which ones do you touch? Well, actually all of them. Really? Um, but all of them, only when they break. Okay, so, so in it's... the sense that, you know, we're not, I, my teams are not the ones that are out building and developing and creating in that DevOps space, if you will, mm. but we are on that upside from the, you know, crit sit sev a sev one crisis management perspective. So, um, and then if we take our apps and we divide them up into business critical apps and non-business critical applications. And so BC applications, as we call them, uh, definitely have a focus. Um, and with a lot of the monitoring that we do for those um, BC apps and some of the non-BC apps, because sometimes apps that are, aren't um, business critical, such as um, your PC or even potentially logging on after the log on process, might not seem to be BC, but it can be very impactful. And so actually the span of control is from the base infrastructure, email, um, SharePoint, um, Office 365, to our business critical you know, supply and trading type applications, supply chain, uh, exploration, you know, the data management apps, uh, process control. So, so you mentioned so DevOps. I got to ask the question, Stu, if you don't mind. Yeah. So, I'll give you my version of the way it, I, I see it, and you tell me, of course correct me, but application development, they develop an app, they throw it over the wall to ops, and they say, deploy. And then ops looks at it and goes, oh, they, they didn't do the security right, it doesn't comply with the, you know, whatever requirements that we have. You go in, you maybe, maybe make some changes, go to deploy it, the code doesn't work, send it back over to application development, say the code doesn't work. They say, well, it did when I sent it, and then you get this back and forth. Right. Okay, so this DevOps culture emerges, uh, but a lot of people say it's more ops dev than it is DevOps. What is it at your company? Well, uh, so we're in a transformation right now, and I think, you know, if you ask five people on the street in the office what DevOps is, you possibly are going to get five different answers. I'm DevOps, no, um, I'm DevOps. Right, <laughs> but um, for me, I still, um, um, you know, sometimes they talk about DevOps. I believe that I was doing DevOps when I started with Shell, and I'll go ahead and say back in 1983, um, which dates me a little bit, but um, you know, DevOps is a mindset, um, and it is a methodology of how you do stuff, and I think in the um, way that applications are morphing and shifting, that indeed that it's not so much throw it over the wall anymore, but it's this DevOps self-contained environment that if you have an application and as a developer, and you can publish that app and immediately get the results of it's working, it's not working, then you kind of self-control. And then with the cloud and the foundation and the platforms of infrastructure, that those pieces, those foundational pieces, and so we think of the you know, the electricity and the air conditioning in this building and uh, so much of it, you would never consider part of your app, it's just there. And so I think there's this sometimes misunderstanding, in my opinion, of DevOps going the entire life cycle into these infrastructure platforms. And I don't think that's the case. And I think that, you know, if we talk about um, IaaS and PaaS and SaaS and those type things, that this DevOps is really fits in this you know, I've got a website, I've got a customer front end, I need to roll quick and do that. And so with that, we need to be able to monitor it. But to me, the DevOps, when, you, when you're changing your SAP infrastructure, um, or you're changing some, you know, key, you know, data element, uh, table structure thing for a financial uh, quarter closing, it's no longer DevOps. It's not throw it out there, and it's a, you need to have more of the waterfall methodology. Mm -hmm. so, so, Jay, you, you said that 
you basically get the call when things aren't working. Right. Um, I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on kind of SD-WAN in general uh, and the, the vision that Riverbed laid out here for the Steel Connect and the, and the Steel Connect 2.0 announcement that they've made here at the show. Um, you know, in general, I think it's absolutely the, the right direction, right vision, and actually seeing it um, in action at the first breakout session was, was kind of cool. So um, it excites me in the realm of I think that it um, paves new way to somebody messing up. In other words, somebody going in and telnetting to a router and um, changing something and, and it breaks because they didn't understand what they were doing um, or they m made the mistake, they did the wrong thing. And so this SD-WAN to where you can kind of abstract some of the complexity um, and, and make it easier, pre-configure, pre-defined, um, easier to swap the devices in or out, I think it's going to have a tremendous impact on reducing. Our number one, what's the number one cause of our operational problems? Human failure. Change. <laughs> and of the, if you break the failures yeah, yeah. of change, it comes down to human failure. So the more that we can take the human out and put smarts in, the, um, um, better that it's going to be. It also scares the hell out of me. Um, in the realm of um, um, the more and more we take the human expertise out because we've made it easy, when the problems are tough, they're tough. That's where then you need the tools to have the visibility to come down and to be able to get down at times to the packet level to be able to solve the problems. And so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good news, bad news, mostly good slash great news, but you want that underlying foundation to be strong and secure. So you mentioned that you've been to some of the breakouts and found some little nuggets that you're going to be able to take to your team. Can you give our audience just a flavor of you know, some of the specifics. What kind of things do you learn coming to these sessions, sitting with the breakouts, talking to your peers? Um, so in the, uh, John Hodges did one on, um, you know, uh, how do you better troubleshoot application um, performance using um, um, Steel Central or App, App Internals Expert. And um, interesting in the realm of, you know, looking at some of the transactions that, you know, so if at the, that add up across many, many things. And so for example, you take, there might be um, some, component on a desktop that is part of every transaction. So if your if you're network driver, for example, are sub-optimized and it's defaulting to 2.4 2, 2 gig instead of the 5 gig, and you don't know that, and it's happening to every user or a lot of users spread across an aggregate, you might not see that unless you have the visibility of getting that data, getting those tools to go look for obscure problems that may manifest themselves in an additive fashion across many number of users. Especially this would be true if uh, you were uh, consumer facing and you had millions of users and those seconds start adding up. And so, you know, being able to look at the tools, we've solved a lot of the big problems with the monitoring that we've put in so far. And the next level is, um, or tranche to go after, is this kind of, I believe, this end user experience. And as cloud and um, HTTPS, SSL come into space, we start getting blinder in the middle um, because we can no longer see inside. And so being able to do the end user experience um, with Eternity um, is going to hopefully give us uh, solve some of that and bring some of the visibility back. That two-sided coin of security is always the way. Uh, so you're, with Riverbed, you're doing both WAN optimization and, and visibility and yes. application performance management. Yes. Okay. And you've yep. been a customer for a while, or yeah. Well, and and so and I uh, I sit more on the visibility side. Okay. We have WAN optimization and. Um, um, on, on the kind of the pure networking side, being in this operational firefighting um, <laughs> um, role and responsible for that, um, uh, we used to have the age old, you know, the best op monitoring system in the world where the user would call you and tell you that their stuff was down. Whereas um, getting ahead of that curve and deploying the tools now, we can see problems before they occur um, and, you know, simultaneously be fixing them. Um, before the user calls, or even better, predictive and proactive to where you actually see it, stop it, before it ever occurs in the first place, 
and the users never even know, or you avoided the, the outage, the impact in the first place. No call, and then the business impact is higher productivity for the users, which means money in the pocket of the corporation. In, indeed, and then, and then telling that story, which is uh, critical, which is often a miss, I think, of IT organizations, is they don't tell their story, or they don't tell the story in business terms. And so if you go to your business stakeholders and talk about latency, you talk about MTTR, you talk, you know, you need to put it in context of terms that the business is going to understand. Right, even RPO and RTO, right? Which well, people say, oh, that's a business yeah. term. I'm like, um, I give you a hundred business guys, they wouldn't know what RPO and RTO well, stood yeah, for. Yeah, right? and M M M M M <laughs> MTPD, maximum <laughs> tolerable players, yeah, so you're right. Yeah, excellent. Jay, great having you on theCUBE. Thanks so much, okay. really appreciate it. All right, glad All to be here, thank you. Right. You're welcome. Keep it right there, buddy. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from Riverbed Disrupt. We got the music playing in the background. This is theCUBE, right back.